Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today we are outside. It's a beautiful day and we're going to be trimming down this log here to make a jointer's mallet. Now I'm going to show you how we can do that using all hand tools. I'm going to start off by trimming this down with a saw, uh, splitting it out with an axe, and then kind of shaping it down with a hatchet from there. And we'll move back over closer to the shop and I'll use my draw horse and a draw knife and a few other tools to kind of shape it the rest of the way use an auger bit to drill, hand drill through, and then we'll shape down a handle and put that through and wedge it in as well. And the great thing about a wooden mallet and a joiner's mallet is that it's a really versatile tool to have in the shop. It's great to be able to have you know, a hammer and a mallet that has a lot of mass behind it, but is softer than most of what you're gonna be using. So if you're using a chisel with it, which a jointer would be using, you're using a chisel, you're hitting the back of your chisel with a wooden mallet and cutting out your joints for woodworking. If you're splitting out a piece of wood and you wanna hit the back of your ax to split it, you don't wanna hit it with another ax because you can mushroom out your metal. So you can use a nice heavy wooden mallet. So it has a really great like all around use to it. So let's go ahead, we'll get started, we'll trim this log off, and then we'll shape it down from there. Oh, man, this one's really sticking. Let me give it another saw a try. Now that I have the end trimmed off, I'm gonna come down about a foot and a half or so, and I've just made a small mark, just for so something I have to guide, to guide me when I'm cutting with my saw. And this will give me enough material to do my handle and my mallet. Now this wood is still pretty wet, even though it's been down for a while. So it's really grabbing my saw. I'm gonna use my uh, ax now. I'm just gonna cut in a back cut, trim this down some straight to this cut to relieve some of that pinch. All right, so that should help quite a bit. Man, this is so tiring, guys. Shows you why I'm an ax guy and not a saw guy. Also why chainsaws were invented. There we go. All right. There we go. Pretty nice, nice and solid. Should be good. And because of the size of this, I'm thinking I want to do something like maybe here, there, like that. That would basically be the head of the mallet going down. And that would leave me material over here to be able to make the handle out of. I uh, try to usually stay away from the core, but as long as it's in the middle, it should be okay. And I need more material. I don't want to go too close to the edges because this bin has, has been outside for a while and could be kind of softer out here. So we'll use the center part. Leave us some here for a handle, should be good. I'm just gonna start by making a couple marks going where I want it. And then we'll add some more pressure behind it and hopefully I can get this to crack straight down this line. A little bit at a time. Mm. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and send it home, see if I can get it to go the right way. All right, not bad. So it actually worked really well, guys. I was surprised, um, you know, putting those relief cuts in the side actually let this run down that cut almost exactly. It did turn a little bit and that was the way the grain was going, but it still helped to follow that grain there, which is good. This gives me plenty of wood here for my handle as long as I want it to be. Whoop. And then also plenty of wood in here for the mallet head. I'll probably end up cutting it right down the middle where this knot is. Probably be able to get two mallet heads out of it. Now we're back over outside the shop and I brought my draw horse and a log to chop on out. And I'm using an ax and a hatchet and my mallet to trim this down, split it out, and chop it down to the main general rectangular shape before we trim it to length. Boom. I'm gonna start just trimming this down with my hatchet. Kind of get this whole thing into a rectangular shape. The grain made it twist a little bit, which is okay, but I like the way that I have a nice rectangle on the top. And right about where this knot is, it's just a little bit bigger than my current mallet, which I think would work really well. Now when I'm carving with an ax or a hatchet, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make a few kind of dashes or notches. So I'll come through, cut all the way down. So I'm kind of starting some cuts to a certain depth where I don't want to kind of put a whole bunch of effort behind it. Then I can come back behind and go at an angle, kind of clear out all that wood I just kind of notched. So it works pretty well to kind of work your way through this and do it a little bit more progressively instead of just full chops and trying to take off big chunks at a time. So that is the reason why I took my time and worked all the way from around the outside. I want to make sure my cuts came all the way together in the middle without too much of an overlap. And that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Now that I have it trimmed down to size, I'm going to go back to my hatchet and do a little bit more shaping to get it nice and rectangular all the way. I'm gonna mark halfway across the top of my mallet head. This is an eight and a quarter, so I'm gonna mark off at four and an eighth. And I wanna bring this across. Now, everything is not perfectly square, so I need to use what I can. So I'm gonna use this top to start with. So I make my mark across the face, the top face of that block, and then I'm gonna bring this around the side. Now I wanna bring this all the way down and mark the back, and that's probably gonna be close to about center, but not exactly. So I wanna work this top edge bring my line down from square to there, and then I'll mark my back marked off of, based off of my top. Because the bottom, we want that line, that hole to go straight through. So to be able to hold that as vertical as possible, have a line coming down, I'll bring it square from this top edge. I'm gonna use a bit and brace to bore out this hole, and I'm using an adjustable bit. This is one that you can actually change the size on, and I want to get it bigger. The biggest one that I have in my shop is a one inch, and I wanted this hole to be bigger than one inch. So I actually have this set to cut a one and a quarter inch hole. I'm just about three inches or so in, which is about half. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, 
We'll start from the other side and meet in the middle. I just felt it come through the other side. I'm gonna do a couple more twists and I should be able to come out the other side. Just wanna be careful how much pressure I'm putting down now. Oh, oh, there we go. There. So that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Just a little bit of a curve, but not much. So let's go ahead and start shaping down the handle. So that's really good. That actually gives me two pieces that are both usable, but this one I can trim this off. The knot is still in this one, but I'd rather have it split on that side. I can trim that knot off. And we have plenty of usable wood over on this side. All right, there we go. Alright guys, it's the next day and I've got the handle to fit really nicely into the hole. It's nice and snug and then get it all the way up to the top. Now obviously this is a bit big. This is like Thor's hammer Mjolnir. I don't need a huge hammer like this. Now this is my normal mouth that I use in the shop and I want it bigger than that because I don't need two of the exact same thing, but this is just a bit big. So I'm going to take some time. I'm going to take about maybe an inch or so off the top of this, clean up the sides, narrow it down just a bit, clean everything up and get it about the right size before I move on to working on the handle some more. So this is looking really good. I'm really happy with the way it is. Whoop. Um, and I'm ready to kind of move on to some planes and kind of shaping this down. I am really happy with the way this has worked. This is my little bushcraft modded axe that I made in a recent video. Uh, definitely go check that one out if you haven't already. I know most of you have probably seen this one because it has the most views on our channel. But it works really well. Um, I'm really happy with it. It's worked really well to do almost all the shaping on this head. Nice and light so I can control it. I can choke on, up on it nice and high, but it also has a really nice wide bit and can just take a lot of material off too. So check that video out if you haven't already and we'll move on to the next step. nice. Just a little bit of a crown to all four sides, which I like. It's a much more usable, manageable size now. So I'm going to go ahead and use my plane to add a chamfer. 
to all these edges as well as the face, just to clean it up, smooth it out a little bit and keep things from kind of chipping off when I'm using it. I have the handle pretty much exactly how I want it, I think. I'll have to get it on the mallet head and then I, may, I make some more adjustments. But it's nice with the uh, draw knife and the spoke shave, it gives a lot of nice facets in the handle, which just gives you a nice textured grip. So, you know, something like this, you're not sliding your hand up and down a lot, you're just using it to hammer. So a nice faceted grip feels really good. So before I fit it to the head, I wanna kinda clean up the faces just a little bit. And I have my plane, have my faces up. Now, you're cutting cross grain right in the end, it's a little bit tough, so I just have my blade just really shallow, just enough to kinda take a little bit off the, the very face, clean that up just a smidge. I'm gonna seat this head on the handle the same way I do axes. So I'll just start it by tapping it on. Get it where I wanted it. Just get it started and then I'm gonna hold the handle and drive it through. Just spinning it around as I go to make sure I'm driving in straight. Keep sending it home. All right, so that looks pretty good. It looks like it's as far as, far as I'm gonna get it to go right now. And I need to go maybe about another, I don't know, about a half an inch or so. That looks really good. I have plenty of material hanging out. So we're gonna drive this back through and we'll cut our kerf, cut our wedge, put it back in and send it home. I'm gonna be cutting the kerf across the grain here so that way to avoid splitting the handle grain. Now the same thing I'm gonna do on the head when I put this on, I'm gonna put it on this way so that way my wedge, it's gonna run this way, that way the wedge will split and push out. It'll push along the wood grain instead of across it because I don't wanna split the whole mallet head open. You can see here where my mallet came down to, and I wanna cut my kerf about two thirds of the way down. That is five inches. So I'm gonna do it about an inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters from the bottom, and I'll cut my kerf down to that line. That way I have a nice deep kerf, and it'll split this and fill the wood up really nicely inside the eye of the mallet head. I have this scrap left over from my handle. I'm gonna use this to make my wedge. So I'm gonna use my draw knife first and just work this down nice and flat. And we'll figure out how, how wide we want it, which is that one and a quarter. Mark it off, get it nice and flat, mark it, and then I'll use my saw to cut the wedge out. You can see my line straight a little bit here, but that's because my face wasn't completely flat back here. This is where I was bringing it up and it actually pulls off some here. So but it's following it really nicely on this edge. I'm gonna continue my cut and then we'll trim this up a little bit once we're done. I'm gonna clean the wedge up now with a little bit of sandpaper. And I'll use the sandpaper to clean up my handle and clean up the mallet head at the end. Mm -hmm. 
putting some glue on here. This is a water resistant glue. The wood's still a little bit wet, so this should bind really well to it. I want to put it on thin, but I want to go a lot up the wedge just because I want to make sure I get enough on there. This is going to be a pretty tight fit, so it's going to, a lot of it's going to want to squeeze off. So I'll just get a nice solid amount evenly on a lot of the wedge. That is a piece that's nice. Handle runs nice straight up and down. Not too heavy. Like it. I'm just gonna go around and just briefly hit everything with some rough sandpaper. Just to clean it up, get a nice little finish look and take off any little fibers or hairs that are sticking up. Not much. We're going to finish the whole thing now by oiling it with boiled linseed oil. All right guys, well this turned out really nice. It's just a fun project using all hand tools with a log that I cut from outside. So this is green mallet right now, the wood's still wet uh, and it'll still change shape and move over time, but it's really nice having a big heavy mallet. So let's go ahead and give it a shot splitting out a piece of wood. All right, not bad. Got a few little dings on the end from the back of my hammer here, but that's the point. You want the wood to be softer than the material, and it's actually not very deep. That's why we use the end grain. It's nice and strong. Oh, well, this turned out really good, and it was a fun project working outside and a little bit inside. Just a nice way to use some hand tools, use some wood, and make something that's really useful in the shop. Uh, if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, check out some of our other videos, and please like and thumbs up this video. It makes a big difference to our channel. Uh, also, another way you can support the channel is go over and check us out on Patreon. And please follow me on Instagram at The Art of Craftsmanship. I love putting up, putting up pictures there and kind of just building the community through that, uh, through that avenue. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next video.